Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city life. Welcome back to part two of the cupboard door build. Now you left us where we had constructed the frame and we left it gluing. Whilst it is gluing, we decided to clamp it down between two thick bits of wood, just to so it, it, it kept the doors nice and flat, so that it didn't curl up as they was curing off. So that's what we've done now. Look, it's all clamped off between two scrap bits of wood, uh, just the two doors at the minute that we've constructed, and um, now we're going to unclamp it and see what they look like. Let's go. Let's go. Sanding to do, but nothing major. So we've just got to fettle them down. You can see where some of the wood's blistered out. So what I'll do is I'll I'll put a little flicker filler in there and sand it back. But then I want to try and get that line back in there, so I'll have to sand a line in there out of the filler just so it ties in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh these compared to a um, compared to a bought door and see what the difference is in weight because that's that's nice and light that is but still strong and does its job at the moment I've left the staples in before I paint it I'll pop them out so it really gives it a chance to cure off got to do a bit of filler in these holes as well but other than that I'm well happy with them so we'll get the scales going now and um, See how much the weight difference is. Right, so that's, that's zeroed. Let me put that on there. 950 grams. That's uh, still fairly heavy. And remember, that is smaller as well than what we've built. Well, that maxes out that. That is heavier than that, but that's saying 1,200, but that's maxed out, so it's probably actually more than 1,500 grams. Right, and then we'll put two on there, see what that does. That maxes it out as well. So we know a bigger panel that we've made is lighter than these shop-bought ones. So I'm well happy with that, isn't we, Deb? Yeah. You know, we, we, we're talking probably 550, 600 grams lighter per door for a larger door as well. So that's excellent. Right guys, so that's the cupboard door. It's gonna go there and I can square it up on its hinges because they are fully adjustable hinges. Um, so I'll set it a mill or two away from the end. Uh, make sure I get both, both panels on. I've got, I've got to do some squaring up with um, a planer um, for some reason. My saw didn't overly cut level, but anyway, I'll space them out and then mark where I want the hinges. So that one's about right there. I just got to make sure I get an even gap. But like I said, I can square that up on the hinges as you do a cupboard, uh, kitchen cupboard door. So, that I'm going to do there, I'm just going to get myself a pencil. Right, I'm going to do the hinges the same distance from the end. Now I've got screws going up into these white battens as you saw me put in a previous episode. So I'm going to measure how far each screw is. 
I need a hinge, hang on. Back with the hinges. Let's see where. I don't want to put a screw here and it ends up going where the screw is going through the batten of wood. So I want to step it in a bit a bit from that. So let's measure how far that is. So if I do the centre line to three inches from either end, right. If I did the centres to the three inches to either end, I'm going to be midway of this joint. So these are all things you've got to take into consideration. Uh, yeah, where I put the hole for this, that'll be midway on that joint. So really, I don't want to be putting a screw on that joint either. So I want to step that in just a fraction. So I want the centre to actually be four inches in. Does that make sense? Um, so if I measure and mark four inches are right on the top and then four inches from the other side as well four inches is 102 mil All right so 102 mil to either end that's good um, turn that back in there set it away from this end unit a bit a couple of mil and then what I'll do then is I'll tip it up and I'll mark there and there so I know now when I put my little jig thing on the center marks are going to be where I want it and then I can do the same on the next cupboard so now what I'll do is I'll get my little jig thing and I'll show you how that works right. the back uh, I've opened one of the doors just to let a bit more light in it Got my little template thing, uh, and we want to mark where the the holes are going for the force and a bit to be able to put the um, for the hinges. And if you can see, I don't know if it picks up on camera there. I can line that groove up with the line that I made, and that gives me an exact location of where to drill the hole. So I line that up. Up there, where to put the mark. Dot there for the screw hole. Dot there for the screw hole. That's left me three, three dots there. That's the centre of the big force a bit, 25 mil. And there, the the dots for the screws to secure them holes. So I'll do the same on the other one uh, and then I'll rattle through them with the forstner bit. So again, three dots, two screws on 25mm forstner bit. And the forstner bit don't want to be as penetrating all the way through, it just goes through enough to sink, sink that recess in like that so it's just over halfway that wants to go through like I said you can get more um, accurate ones of these I've used this a few times now and it's never put me wrong so I'm happy to use that the only difficulty is I've got to make sure I go square and flat down with the force in a bit and it's up to myself to guide how deep I go but I normally just go so to the back of the force in a bit is level you'll see okay in a so I've got this line here that lines up with that bottom of that triangle and I've got two dots in here that I just mark out dot there they dot there you can see them two dots there 
there and there. That's for the the screws to go in there and there. All right, so I've got my dots um, put in place for my screws. I'm just going to put a little starting sort of hole. Not, I'm not going too deep because I want it to cut its own um, cut its own thread. If I just start it off. It means the screw's not skinning around when when I uh, put the screws in. I'll do the same on this board here. Just literally a that's that. Another one for where the force the bit's going to start. That's it. So that's my, my three holes. Pass my drill over to Debbie, and uh, we'll go and force the bit. Right, you've heard me talking about force the bits. Uh, I've got this set here. It's a 16-piece force the bit. Now they're all imperial sizes, but I've measured it uh, as to what size I need. Open the box. And the size I want is one inch. And what it does is it cuts a flat hole um, in your piece of timber. Now I've done, done a tester piece and that's the sort of effect it gives you. So it's a lowered piece. And that goes in there, so I've got to go to about the back of that level with the surface of the wood. Now on the tester piece I did, that spike there, just put a small hole in the front of it. So I may have to, if I go through a little bit, I might have to just flick a bit of filler in there, but I've still got all the sanding and filling to do anyway. Um, and then when you get one of the hinges, Two, two holes done. Just get it the right way around, Richard. It sits nice and flush, like that. Just test the other one. And that's it. That's my two, two hinges. I've just got to secure those. Um, then I can screw them to the top. And we'll have cupboard doors, Deb. Yay. So get them secured and then we'll start on the other bit inside. And, uh, double check them marks I put in the roof were right as well. They look okay to me. So I'll make a start and screwing them up. them loose for the minute because I might want to slide it side to side so I don't want to gaunch it all down um, until I know I've got it in the right place What I need to do is lift it up on the mechanism to uh, they don't quite hold, which is a shame. What do you think, Deb? It's a bit, it's a bit of a shame, isn't it? Yeah, but it is what it is. Um, right, I'll put the other screws in uh, and then get it adjusted. Right, guys, so that's a very, very quick sand down. Um, quick go at leveling them up um, that gap there it's not too bad it's not as level as I'd like it's slightly thicker at the top 
than it is at the bottom, but that's maybe a picky. Uh, the level at the side there, it's not too bad, it's pretty good. It's a pretty even gap along the top, although the roof does slope down towards the back. It's just the natural shape of these vans, so all the way along to about here is fine, and then it starts getting a bit narrower, so I understand that. The gap along the bottom there, um, I'm quite happy with, considering I just lobbed that shelf up really and leveled it up to the best of our abilities. Um, that gap along the back, it's not too bad. Um, one thing that is peeing me off, that bookend is slightly on the pee, but again, that's me just being over picky. So, got all the, the hinges on, unfortunately, it is going to need gas struts, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, now it's time for me to fit the, the pop catches. Tick, 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 tick. And um, they're not too bad. It's just a case of measuring, um, measuring the height of things and getting them in the centre. But um, I'm well happy with them. Uh, when they're painted, a similar colour to this bedspread, which is like a an aqua blue, like a, a slightly green tinge to a blue. Um, I think it'll look nice. So, got it took me all weekend just to do two, but we had an issue with our table saw. Uh, the bearings exploded, and uh, it's Sunday. Couldn't get a bearing, and I realised I had an angle grinder that I weren't using that was about burnt out. So I rubbed the bearing out of that and uh, hey presto it fitted, so it got us back on the way again. Um, so we've got that cupboard there to do, all the cupboards there to do, all the cupboards there to do, and the ones above the living room area. And decide what to do with that door and the little hatch under the bed. Right guys, uh, so we're going to fit. Uh, the push button switches uh, catches into the locker doors. These are the ones I've got, usual ones that everybody has. Uh, I think I paid 16 or 18 pound uh, for a pack of 10, and you have that collar that inserts in there, and it just goes around there, and then you, you push it, and it releases that catch in there which locates onto this little metal tab that you put inside and it stops the door from swinging open and so on. So first thing you do is measure the overall width of your cupboard door which is 485 in this case and half 485 is 242.5. Um, so then what you do is you see this uh, centre shaft of the push button? You measure from the centre of that roughly to the bit after it's pushed out. So not like that, like that, so that's at full extent. You measure that and that is... mil. Now because you've got a gap at the bottom of your door and the screws that go through this uh, stick a little bit proud uh, you need to clear them screws otherwise it doesn't allow you to push a button because it hits against them screws so you add about three mil on so we'll take that to about 25 and a half just measure that see if we're happy with that so it's just a bit bigger so because we've made a mark there of 242.5 which is the middle of that door uh, you then go to the bottom of that where the mark is just put an indentation with your vernier if you haven't got a vernier uh, mark with a tape measure so we now know how high the center of that hole wants to be and the center of the door so we know that that wants to be just there if that's picking up on camera uh, so now I'll go through with a 19mm uh, hole saw uh, and then sink that in place 
uh, and then go about doing the next stage. And there we have it. There's the hole. Now the secret to cutting these holes without uh, breaking the back out, you can either clamp another bit of wood to it and go all the way through, or what I tend to do is I go halfway through and then when the center, when the center drill pushes through the back, I then use that hole to guide through from the other side and it just finishes the hole. Halfway through, can you see that burr? That means I've done some from one side and some from the other. So then that way it stops it from stop, stops it from busting its back out. Uh, just leaves a nice, nice finish on the back. Now when I've got all these catches in, I'll go around just filling these gaps with some filler uh, and giving them a, a quick sand up and paint and stuff like that. So we can put that door back on. Put it back on there. And then tighten that up. And that should be there or thereabouts where it was. Um, and then that bit there just pushes in there nice and snug. So then that's your centre, your centre bushing. And then what you do then is you mount the other side to that. I will take the door off again because I can make sure it's sitting square and not twisted either way. And then that button there then will push in. So I'll get that mounted. So there we have it on the back. It's all mounted and screwed. And when you push that in, that catch should be just below the level of the door. And that way then you know it's going to clear the metal catch. Uh, that you put inside because if it's going to catch uh, that it will catch the door and vice versa so you you want it so it's just just shy of that wooden frame so now we can put that back in again unfortunately it is out back in out back in and trial and errors and things like that Okay, it's that one, and that's that one. Right, so now that's in there like that. Yeah, but of course, because I haven't got the metal bit on it, it still opens and closes, even, even with that there. I've got to get some hinges as well, but that would be in, uh, some gas struts, but that would be in another video. Now the secret I use to mount in this catch is I mount it in line with that bit and I bring it forward and I let it I let it push it back of its own accord to where it wants to be but that's still a couple of mil too far forward and you'll end it with a baggy catch you don't want a baggy catch do you? Um, so what I do is I then lift it up gently and I just take it back a couple of mil and then secure it with the screws. Now these are very very fiddly so I'm going to be in your way. Okay so I've secured it with one screw and what I like to do is just test it See what I mean? It's still baggy. Now if I put both screws in, I'm probably going to be uh, I'm going to be too far out on two two holes. Now, if you put a hole in there and you want to put another screw next to it, another secret is you put a um, skewer stick in the hole, and then you can screw next to it without it jumping into the hole. The skewer stick will act as if that hole's not there. So what I do then is I just twist it. Just a little bit back, push it, and that's nice and secure then, it's not got the play. You see what I mean? If I put that straight again, and do it, see, and then you can twist it, and keep trying it, and that's nice and secure then, no play. So then I can screw that other one in, put a skewer stick in that hole, 
and then twist it straight then we know we're in the right place and it'll be spot on okay so here's my skewer stick what i do also do is i pop that in the hole where the other screw was push it in there nice and firm and then just snap it off and then that acts as if the hole's not even there then and then when you swing it round to straight you can put the screw in next to it and the screw won't jump into the hole then Okay, so that's now sitting straight. Uh, the, the skewer stick stopped the screw from jumping into the next hole. Now I have got to put a bump stop there at this side, so that is acting like it's slack, but it will be actually tight. So that's it. So I've screwed that in and uh, the skewer stick has stopped the screw from jumping into the hole uh, and now it's sitting level it looks nice and neat uh, and now when you put that in it's got a little bit of a really small amount but I haven't got a backstop on this end so as you can see it goes in too far but by the time I bring that out that makes that really snug on that catch so that's good Yep, happy with that. Um, so now all I need to do is do these other two uh, and the rest of the lockers, get filler in them, sanding and painting, uh, and then I'll order up my gas struts to keep them open um, when I need to get in there. I think they look pretty good, don't you think? I'm well happy. Yeah, there we have it guys. So we've got three cupboards. We've got catches. And I just need to put a bump stop on the end there to stop that. I'm out of shot. That's the middle one. That's the end one. Just need to put a bump stop on the end here. So that's got something to push against. And uh, and uh, we've got, got all three. Yeah. So put the bump stop on and then I'll get filling and sanding, painting. Uh, we're gonna do it a similar color blue to to this it's probably better like that yeah, that's the color blue we're gonna do it like a greeny aqua blue um, it just breaks up all that white we've got I know we've got little accents of silver and that uh, and the wood floor and worktop but we just want to go with a nice blue uh, just to give it that pop of color uh, the kitchen doors we've got a gray like I said we did cheat on the kitchen side of it because we was up against the clock we're going to Scotland so we just bought that and modified them to fit um, we didn't want to do them all like that because they're quite weighty so um, as we showed in a previous episode uh, these are nearly twice as light as one that was smaller so we're quite happy with those uh, we'll give them doors a coat of paint on the kitchen as well uh, just to tie them all in uh, I've still got to make, let's swing you around, still got to make this door, uh, but it'll be the same process. Still got to make the cupboard door, uh, the wardrobe door where we hang our shirts and Debbie's dresses and things, same process. Um, and then once that's done, um, I can make a start on doing the, the draw step um, 
uh, that goes into the bed that will be a drawer that lifts up a lid and that's our step to get in the bed and we can store stuff in it as well and there'll be an extra table on there as well for extra prep space and storage space when we want to have a coffee or something in bed um, so we'll get on painting these and I'll show you that next time thanks for watching if you like what you've seen please like please subscribe and please share and if you really feel like it hit that little bell icon and you'll get to see all our future videos and on that note we'll see you on the next one bye hey, darling, can i tell you what's been on my mind sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light